Hey there, thanks for joining me today. This is a hello world on how to use the Infragistics ASP.NET web client controls in an ASP.NET MVC application. Let's start things off right. Let's, uh, we've got a blank Visual Studio here. I wanna start by creating a new MVC project. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just call this MVC test. And I'm gonna skip the test project right now. I know um, that's generally a bad idea, but what I wanna focus on is just the user interface controls right now. So let, let's do a couple things. First of all, within our views, let's create a new folder. So uh, we'll just call this uh, WDG. I'd like to show you how to add some data to the web data grid. So we'll, we'll just start by sticking it in there. The next thing that we need to do, we need to work with some models. And I have some classes set aside here. So uh, let's bring some of these in here. So I have a fake repository. And what this will do is basically abstract uh, the, the idea of a database. So it's just going to save some objects and cache for us. And um, let's deal with a person right now. So let's bring these in. As you can see, the person is pretty simple. And the fake repository is just there for, like I said, persisting those objects. So. Now that we have those, what I, the next thing I want to do is create a view model. So this is the, the object that will abstract away our view. So let's just call this uh, WDG basic view. And inside of this, what we want to have is just a, a list of those people. So we'll create a, a public I list of person and we'll call it people. Now that we've got that, we just need a controller. So let's go ahead and add our WDG controller. And from here, we just need a using statement over to our models. And what we'll do is create a new instance of our view model class. So the WDG basic view. And what we need to do is provide the people property some value, some some data. So we'll do this uh, VM people, and then we're going to use that fake repository. We'll create one, and then we'll add uh, like 20 people into it, and then we'll get all of them. So now that we have that, um, we can just provide the view model up to the view. and build to make sure everything works out. Perfect. So the last thing that we need to do is come into the view itself and add the web data grid and give it the, the, the data. So let's create the new view here. Call this index. And so what I'll do is go to my toolbox and drag on the web data grid. And then the next thing I need to do is drag on another control. We, I have this loaded in the toolbox for the uh, Infragistics MVC. It's the MVC, the Infragistics MVC script manager. And so what that con control will do is look at any one of our controls and find out what resources and script files it needs. And so this gives it the ability to disconnect from uh, a run at server form and also needing the ASP.NET AJAX script manager. So let's clean this up just a little bit. Um, we'll just call this SM for script manager and Go like that. Now the web data grid, we'll call this WDG. Um, we don't need the height, the width. We'll put it at like, I don't know, 50%. Sounds good. Uh, enable view state. Guess what that's gonna be? Yeah, that's right. Turn that view state off. And that's all we need to do there. The next thing I wanna do is strongly type this view page. So let's come in here and do that. Build and make sure that works. Now, there's a couple things here that if you're a strict, strict MVC person will look a little odd. Now, we're not using extension methods, but remember what we're doing is we're, we're creating a marriage between two things that originally weren't weren't created to work together. So we have server controls, we've got some things that are set run at server and we've got some some markup in there. Um, but really, I think it's okay because all we're doing is, is telling the, this view page that it needs to instantiate these controls. 
So the other thing that we have to do is I have to open up a server-side script block. And the reason for that is, is because this is a data bound control, so it needs its data source property set. Unfortunately, ASP.NET won't let us do that declaratively, so we need to do it somewhere. So let's just open up this script. The type is C sharp and run its server. And so just like you'd normally used to, we just do a protected void page load. And so then we can go from here, the web data grid, the data source is equal to this model people and data source, uh, the web data grid, data bind. Now, so notice we're not looking at if his post back or anything silly like that. We're simply saying when this page loads, just give it this data. So that should be everything that we need to do. Let's go ahead and run it and see how it looks. So here's our MVC application. If I go to WDG, here's my grid and it looks pretty good actually. One thing that we need to do is um, take care of some of the styling. So let's close this down. Now that we have everything in this view page, I'm gonna switch over to design mode and you'll see that it brings in this dialogue that says it's gonna bring in all the style sheets and everything that we want. So that's a good thing. And the last thing to note is that the MVC uh, template sites, um, the styles that they put in there for tables kind of interfere with the, the web data grid. So I'm just going to delete these tables, these styles entirely. So now let's go ahead and run this again and see how it looks. That looks a lot more like the grid we're used to seeing. And just to show how easy it is to work with it now, um, I'm going to drop back to Visual Studio, come into my view page, open this up and I can add some behaviors now. So we'll say, all right, open up these behaviors. And let's say I want to have a uh, column resizing and uh, activation. So we added those in, come back, refresh the page. Now I can resize these columns. That looks very nice. And as I click on these, hit the tab key, hit the arrow keys, I have activation running, events are firing in the background about which cell is active and on and on. So as you can see, we have uh, standard ASP.NET web controls hosted within an, an ASP.NET MVC application. There's no run at server tag, there's no, no script manager. And as long as you work within the functions and the behaviors of the controls that don't require a post back, you're gonna find there's a lot available to you, even in MVC with these controls. Well, thanks a lot for checking out this video. And if you have any questions about what you've seen, please feel free to send me an email at cshoemaker at infragistics.com. If you want to take a look at the documentation for any one of our products, you can go to infragistics.com slash docs. And if you'd like to contact our support, you can go to infragistics.com slash support. Thanks again for checking us out and make sure you check out the website where you'll find a lot more videos that'll help you get started with the NetAdvantage toolset. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.